Greetings, Jonathan Camarda, mid-September. So uh, let's get going here. As again, we'll start from the top macro and uh, arrive at the micro. So a lot to cover. Uh, you know, building on uh, the last uh, the last podcast there that we had. So again, what we're looking at: the Fed came out last week, uh, kind of threw the market off there with its higher for longer on rates. Not sure why that was surprising, as we talked about the resilient CPI PPI numbers, certainly with energy, and we're looking at uh, global uh, food uh, transportation, and now flat home sales getting real, real flat, uh, as that is uh, really, really a dire area. So again, when we start to look at uh, many macro factors, again, really looking at that 10-year yield, uh, you know, could get up to 5.5%, 6%. Now, right now, it's in the uh, mid-fours, uh, highest level since 2007, so that's 16 years uh, and the such there. So you start to see that battle with yields for uh, equities as far as the uh, TINA, there is no alternative certainly uh, somewhat out the window and uh, as far as that goes. So now as we start to look at, again, macro factors we talk about, uh, U.S. dollar has been kind of bouncing in a range versus the major currencies that I watch, euro, uh, yen, uh, as well as the Canadian dollar. Uh, showing some resiliency there as rates remain buoyant, uh, we do have a stubbornly strong economy, stubbornly, and we'll get into some of the bifurcation there, and then, of course, we have low unemployment data, you know, less than 4%, although that is starting to show a little bit of a rise, which can create a little bit of area that we want to keep an eye on. Now, the fixed income markets have really been unattractive for the last two years. And as you know, even in strategies like active capital preservation, a little micro here, <laughs> uh, we've steered away from the longer end of the curve for any long periods of time as that yield curve, really since last November, is still steeply inverted. And again, that means the short-term interest rate's a lot higher, which is usually a precursor for recession. How deep? You never really know until you're in it. It's a quicksand. Uh, but again, that is not really positive news, generally, economically speaking. So we've been sticking on the shorter end of the yield curve. And of course, in our conservative strategies, you know, we've been uh, long interest rates short the long-term treasuries uh, and the such there. So again, and that continues to be the mantra. Now, most f- expect the Fed to hike one more time this year, on another quarter basis, uh, qu- you know, quarter point hike, uh, probably November. And then nothing projected from there, although there are folks, bond investors are certainly looking at maybe more hikes in the 2024. And any hopes for, uh, again, rate uh, decreases certainly been pushed to the back half of 2024. Now, as far as the market goes, obviously we've had a higher volatility. The market was steaming along mid-August, right? And we start to see rates creep back up again. We had a drop. And then again in September, it's been another down uh, month. But now, put things in perspective, since 1950, uh, the market has two 5% drops annually on average. Nothing out of the ordinary just yet. Now, things that we're watching, uh, looking at the VIX volatility index, and that has, in March, August, and September, spiked versus the S&P 500, right? Makes sense. You know, volatility goes up, and prices generally uh, go down, and as such there. And we'll continue to watch that. We think the VIX is maybe a little overdone. So in a very short term, very short term, expect a bounce into this week on some oversold conditions, and then we just have to watch from there. A couple of things we're watching also is that small caps, like the Russell uh, 2000 and retail stocks have also uh, been headed south versus the S&P 500, which is more risk off recently. And during the runs in late spring into the summer, uh, you know, they were outperforming the S&P 500. They both kind of found some floors, which means there may be some room to bounce, which would give some buoyancy to equities uh, in general. Now, we do see hedge funds starting to reduce their exposure to discretionary stocks. Everyone's talking about the big seven and as such, which have driven the market, AI and technology. We have to see, right? Rates higher for longer. Certainly has been a dowser if you will, for, uh, for the NASDAQ. Uh, but again, we have to see where this trajectory leads. You know, the inflationary trajectory, regardless of what the Fed said, everyone expected them to be hawkish. They don't always follow suit. Not a great indicator, folks, uh, to, just, to just follow by the letter, so to speak, or the number in this case. The thing that we're also looking at is since 1981, may have mentioned this before, but when we have a negative August and September, the last nine times the market's been up for Q4 on average of about nine 9.3%. Again, nothing's the short, but when we start to look at the, again, a little counter uh, comparison I look at, the American Association of Individual Investors, 
become more bearish this week. That's usually a, con, you know, a contrary indicator. The National Association of uh, Active Investment Managers have stayed resilient in that 60-plus uh, uh, percent uh, range of, uh, of exposure. Probably, again, looking at the historical uh, price movements. Now, we talk about history. Uh, October has generally been a pretty decent month as well, following uh, the two negative August and September. And just in general, although it gets the rap for one of the worst, worst months, it actually is, and it's September. Uh, so we will see, again, as we move into October, where the market lands. Now, some um, you know, golden linings, if you will, uh, to the market. There's a lot of money still on the sidelines. And certainly, if you're earning a nice 5% yield, makes sense. However... However, the market is forward-looking, generally 8 to 12 months. So once it figures out that the Fed will not be raising a bunch, which, again, that's the probability, the end, that would provide some buoyancy, especially for some of those oversold areas like small caps. Too soon to really jump on that at this point, but that's the way it works. By the time you think you feel safe doing it, it's already happened. And that's why most folks stay on the sidelines too long, as opposed to, again, we're looking at logical, linear uh, algorithms and as such to look at this, not reading the headlines or when it feels good because the market's uh, risen enough. So again, looking at, again, a confluence of different things there. So we start to look at economically speaking, you know, like I said, uh, the consumer is starting to show signs of wear and tear. We've talked about this already with credit card debt over a trillion, bankruptcies on the rise as well. Uh, so again, uh, as we start to move with increasing prices, uh, and as such, the resilient consumer that everyone talks about on TV, all the smart talking heads, uh, is that really reality? Uh, no. And I think you'll start to see it working its way through the system, which is why a lot of folks call for recession next year. They've been calling for it. Little boy that cried wolf. Nobody hears anymore. Well, you just don't want to get bit. So, again, we are watching that very uh, diligently. If you have any, client, uh, or any questions, rather, for you clients, <laughs> for flirty and slip, uh, you know, certainly talk to your personal wealth advisor, clients that I deal with as well. Looking at equity exposures, again, looking at that ho- those historical patterns, we don't want to overreact, but we will have our head on a swivel if this October does not revert to what the historical mean has been. In other words, a rebound off of two uh, down months to end the summer and early fall with some of those macro headwinds. So with that being said, uh, we will stay eternally vigilant uh, to make sure that uh, we stay on side, so to speak. If you have any questions, again, let us know. If you've had any issues, of course, with the, with the Schwab conversion, everyone I've spoken to, it went pretty swimmingly. No real issues, uh, as again, there's a lot of moving parts. Very nice infrastructure, though, uh, that I have found and clients have, uh, have uh, seemed to have felt the same way. Again, we'll talk to you very soon. Jonathan Camarda, stay frosty.